as a queer Nigerian person. I grew up really struggling with these two identities, feeling like I couldn't be both LGBTQ and African, hearing things like it was un-African to be LGBT. And I didn't feel like I could be a whole person. And for me, dealing with those personal struggles eventually really drove me to photography because photography became a space where I could be free. I did a lot of work around LGBTQ African history. And one of the things that I learned during that process is that colonization progressively erased and destroyed and created this narrative that it was un-African, that, that, that black people were so close to the level of animals that we were only capable of a natural heterosexual impulse to reproduce. It's not that our culture is the problem, it's that our culture has been transformed and distorted through the colonial process. And so I'm working as much as possible to share aspects of history so that as we move forward in the 21st century, we transform our culture to then create open spaces for LGBT people. Oh my god, I love this picture so much. I remember I spent like a year just not doing the photography because I didn't think I was a good enough photographer. When I did this picture, I felt like I could see that there was some talent. So I was like, I'm never going to take a picture as good as this one again. That was my whole thing. So it was nice. It was a nice opening moment. It inspired me to keep going. I photographed over 50 LGBTQ African immigrants in 10 countries across North America, Europe, and the Caribbean. And that project was really based in my own personal experience. When I went back to Nigeria, I had a really traumatic experience where I really felt I couldn't be both LGBTQ and African. Dealing with a lot of depression and anxiety, coming out of that experience, I didn't really feel like I had a voice. And for me, I wanted to know if, first of all, were there other LGBTQ African people? <laughs> that was the first question I wanted to know. And then I wanted to see how they fuse these two identities together. Because if I could see how they did it, maybe I could get a little bit of an answer for how I could do it myself. I had been really struck by the murder of Michael Brown and how his body was left in the street for hours. And then how that image was then plastered all over the media. I was like, mm, how can I now maybe craft something to respond to that and reimagine the black body as a space of magic and life? I came to this method of actually painting the model's bodies with fluorescent paints. Um, I have an, I'm an engineer by training, so I built my own flash that only transmits ultraviolet light, and then photographing the models under the ultraviolet light with the painted patterns that I've done on their bodies to then illuminate their body in these patterns of the cosmos. Being able to see the pictures it allows you to um, think of yourself as bigger right, as a whole universe. Um, and that's not really something that people are encouraged to do. Honestly, it was really inspiring to be able to like take a step back and see the frames and see something like what felt like the truest bits of myself kind of illuminated on the digital screen of a camera. 
you don't get to see black people experiencing pleasure as much as you do see them experiencing pain because of all of that like pain and hardship that we've endured there's something so magical and beautiful about us i think doing this shoot it was like one of the first times that i really felt beautiful i think that's so powerful for black people to be able to see themselves as magical it's very healing it's been really great because even with all the trauma that started that journey, I feel like it's really just helped me to now resolve a lot of that, to actually feel like, you know what? I've made it this far and I can move on. I can move forward.